Watch these disturbing scenes and tell me which country do you think you're looking at? Because what used to be called the world's happiest country is now dealing with this. And these are the, from the from Steve from the bull bearing from the grenade. Gang violence, shootings, innocent deaths. So much that gun violence per person in their capital city was at one point 30 times higher than London's. The most intriguing part, coincidentally, these disturbing crimes have shot up after this country opened its doors to immigrants. And they opened their doors so much that 20% of their population now consists of people not born inside their country, wherever you are from. And whether you consider yourself liberal or conservative, and whether or not you care about the heavy topic of immigration, this video might just surprise you. Because what's happening to this country will give you an important lesson of what happens when immigration gets out of control. Sweden's notorious open-door policy collapsed after the nation literally ran out of places to house migrants and a massive crime wave hit asylum centers. This is the sad story of the happiest country in the world. And before I reveal to you what country this is, let me first help you understand how many of its people are feeling right now. Just imagine this with me for a second. You own this nice, beautiful house. And you're very proud of it because you dedicated your hard work and your hard-earned money just to nicely build it all up to what it is right now. Until suddenly you hear some helpless strangers banging on your door. You have never met them, but with your kind heart you realize these people had been rejected, starving, and they wouldn't know where else to go. So you take them in, feed and clothe them without any conditions. Until, sadly, later on, those same people you helped, they won't even talk to you or help you at home. Wars. They cause you chaos. So you've got st you've got stones, you've got Molotov co cocktails, you've got grenades. It doesn't sound like Sweden, does it? Yes, ladies and gentlemen. The surprising country we're talking about is the well-respected Sweden. Who treated their country as a home, where everyone, no matter the background, is welcome. You could say that Sweden is in a national crisis. In fact, Swedish people believe in the beautiful concept of Folkhemet, in English, the people's home. Where the Swedish society is seen as a family, where each member contributes and looks after one another. This very idea is what made the Swedes known for being efficient, open-minded, and responsible. Traits that would make them create a social welfare dream come true, where education and healthcare are mostly free and among the best in the world, all while being one of the world's richest countries. That's why people in Sweden don't really mind paying high taxes, even if about 20 to 50% of their salary goes to the government. Because they see all the incredible benefits uplifting their lifestyle. But what happens when they see that the money they worked so hard for is now funding the very danger that could change their entire country? But Malmo is now the capital of Europe. We can trace that self-inflicted challenge back in 2015, when Sweden proved to the world just how generous and open-minded it was by welcoming 163,000 refugees within one year. Many of them were from Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan, who were desperate to escape wars. Sweden is struggling to accommodate 165,000 people who have applied for asylum there amid the refugee crisis. In fact, Sweden was so kind it welcomed the most immigrants per capita, more than any other country in the European Union. And at first, they all took pride in this moral decision, as they should. After all, to them, it was just a universal 
commercial moral obligation. So they didn't mind spending 6 billion euros on asylum seekers that year. It's like the, the gates of hell is open. More and more immigrants is coming every day. So what then exactly happened? That now Sweden is forced to think twice about their own generosity. We are well on our way to becoming a minority in our own homeland. When people are told, you know, it's not so much that immigration is good, period, or bad, period. The point is, is that you can't possibly say that all of it is good and all, or all of it is bad. Well, let's call it a national identity crisis. Because after waves of immigrants coming in hundreds of thousands every year, by now, one out of five people in Sweden are not the people born in their country anymore. Meaning, around two million are immigrants and refugees out of Sweden's roughly 10 million population. De gör det så gott de kan, förstår jag. Det är väl det är ju svårt. Men ja, det har nog blivit lite mycket invandrare. And when you look at who many of these two million are, you would understand why many say that Sweden now has parallel societies, where people live in the same country but with totally different realities. Sweden. Who would believe this? They took in large numbers, they're having problems like they never thought possible. Because look, how did it even happen that in the once happiest country, Sweden, How did it happen that in peaceful Sweden bomb attacks are becoming so much more frequent and at least 40 organized crime gangs most if not all, from foreign backgrounds, thrive. Uh, and the grenade exploded at the fourth lamppost over there. And then he was killed. Tell me, how did it happen that a refugee or immigrant would come to this generous country, enjoy all its benefits and still make up 38% of its 30% of its murderers, 20% of its physical abusers. One report even claimed that 90% of shootings were carried out by people with foreign backgrounds. <coughs> Tragically, Sweden has gone from having one of the lowest levels of deadly shootings in Europe to one of the highest within just a decade. And the most heartbreaking of all, they are grooming children of immigrants as young as 14 to commit organized crimes. Could it be that Sweden's generosity to immigrants has become the thing that can destroy it? Well, that's the thing, because if you ask the Swedish, they'll most likely give you two totally different answers. Just like the division in America, the more liberal people will continue to celebrate the country being multicultural and blame recent problems on poverty and inequality. The anti-immigrant parties are trying to sell the people that the Muslims that they uh, are trying to invade the country, uh, which is completely false, not true. While conservatives who want to put their nation first will say that political correctness and the open borders have led to this exact social chaos. The problem is everybody talks about rights of immigrants and no no one talks about duty of immigrants. Tragically, some will even conveniently use this as an excuse to be anti-immigrant and racist. Then you have to do what you can to get a new job or job. So you can pay the taxes and if you want a job in, here in Ronneby, uh, take out a hijab. And if you don't want it, why are you here? But see, there's at least one word that both sides agree on. Integration. Or should we say the lack of it? Because no matter how much Sweden aspires for everyone to be part of its family, certain cultures and people just seem to find it more challenging to even start to feel like they belong. As you know, many of them happen to be from conflict-affected regions in the Middle East, where people talk using their native languages and therefore keep to themselves or one another. If you live in Mamo, you know that you should avoid them or else you will, you will get beat up. Even even more challenging, unlike the idealistic Swedish people, majority are Muslim and have wildly different beliefs. Most of these lads that are coming over by boat are from cultures that have huge gang problems, have huge 
disrespect for women, um, have sexual crimes. And sadly, these immigrants also tend to come from nations that are unfortunately less educated. Meaning they are obviously also less likely to get a job and turn their lives around. You have one of the people from the least educated coming to one of the uh, highest educated countries. Especially in an already rich country like Sweden, where only less than 5% of jobs allow applicants who didn't finish beyond basic education. It costs a lot because they don't work very much. As an immigrant myself, I feel that we are guests in someone else's house. It's your job to be productive, polite, respect the culture and try to blend in with the locals. And not the other way around. And what happens when the immigrants cannot have jobs? Well, they are left to heavily rely on Sweden's tax kindness. Meaning they conveniently get a chunk of the country's amazing social welfare benefits, again funded by Swedish taxpayers. <laughs> And on top of that, possibly feeling too comfortable because they know Sweden will take care of them anyway, no matter what. They apparently become perfect targets for the bad guys who came here, not to integrate into Swedish society, but obviously to commit organized crime. The leaders that control a, a lot of the drug market, uh, they are operating from abroad. Human traffickers bringing the asylum seekers in would take advantage of the Swedish right of refugees to establish their own housing. And since these poor asylum seekers already owe the smugglers huge debt, they are forced to make deals with the bad guys, be exploited for cheap illegal labor and have their welfare benefits stolen from them. This cycle of hopelessness continues, with criminal gangs getting more and more established. And now, because of them, the generous Swedes cannot help but lose patience. It's natural for people to get upset when you change their country so quickly. Sweden has the right to be Swedish. This is a difficult time for Sweden. How serious is it? It's important to say that as an immigrant myself, I am not really anti-immigration. And this video is only focused on uh, the actual facts rather than my beliefs. But truth is, I am sad to see how many immigrants out there don't respect the countries they go to and only make them Wars. But now that you've heard how complicated this all is, I hope the last thing you take away from this story is to choose to be less kind. Because in this world where the weak and the voiceless will always need more support, choosing to be generous will always be the noble choice. It's just a matter of making sure that generosity is not taken for granted.